Delta Cron? What the? You're telling me there's a combined Omicron and Delta variant now? Hey, I'm Dr. Asmind. Is Delta Cron real? Is it even possible? Let's break down what's really going on here and hopefully give you all some reassurance. I would strongly advise you to watch the whole video, but here's a quick two sentence summary. A new strain recombined from two different viruses is indeed possible. But in the case of Delta Cron, whether it is a genuinely new variant or due to lab contamination is still a matter of debate among scientists as of today, 12th of January 2022, although the majority believe it's due to contamination nation rather than a genuinely new variant. Okay, so let's get into it. What's the worry here? Well, the news is that scientists in Cyprus have reported that they've apparently found cases of so-called Delta Cron. Presumably, the reason they're worried is because this new potential hybrid variant could have the transmissibility or contagiousness of Omicron combined with Delta's pathogenicity or ability to cause disease. Such a virus could potentially spread like wildfire, maybe, or maybe not. You'll note that I've said a lot of maybes and potentialies. Why? Because scientists and health experts are currently debating whether or not Delta Cron is even real. So what happened in these cases in Cyprus? Professor Leon Dios Kostrikis argues that this is a genuine new variant from the recombination of Delta and Omicron variants in people who have been co-infected with both at the same time. His group reports 25 such cases in Cyprus and from their analysis, it appears to be more common in hospitalized patients. Professor Kostryka says that this Delta Cron has also been detected in a lab in Israel, which is pretty convincing if these results have been reliably repeated elsewhere, but we don't have any further information about this. On the other hand, there's an argument that there was contamination in the lab. Dr. Thomas Peacock of Imperial College London, one of the first scientists to identify the Omicron variant, believes this is quite clearly due to contamination, an opinion shared by many scientists who think that this is due to sequencing artifacts. In other words, the genetic sequence they've submitted looks more like what would happen if Omicron fragments found their way into a Delta sample, rather than what you'd expect to see if Omicron and Delta genetically recombined. This might be due to specific problematic primers that are used during the genetic amplification and sequencing steps of the PCR analysis process. So it may be a systematic issue in these laboratories processing. But the question here remains, is something like a hybrid Delta Cron variant even possible? The short answer is yes. Yes, it is. We need to get into the nitty gritty of the world of viruses in terms of how they behave and multiply. Let's talk about genetic recombination. It is very possible that someone can be co-infected with Delta and Omicron variants at the same time. Just like you might be co-infected with influenza and COVID at the same time. Viruses typically have a spike protein on their surface that allows entry into human cells. They then hijack the cell's genetic machinery to multiply and produce more viruses. This spike protein isn't antigen on the surface of the virus, one of many that our immune system can recognize and produce antibodies against. When two strains of a virus co-infect a host cell together, they can actually share genes between themselves when they are replicating. And this is the process of genetic recombination. There are two main mechanisms. The first is independent assortment, when genes are randomly swapped between the two viruses. The second is incomplete linkage. That's where certain genes are linked to each other and they swap over as a group. Group. When either of these happen, you can end up with antigenic drift, where the surface antigens of this new virus appear slightly different from the original, or antigenic shift, where there is a major change in the surface antigens. So it may appear like a totally new viral strain or display characteristics similar to the parent viruses. The genetic swaps can potentially alter their virulence by either increasing or decreasing their ability to spread between humans, to end to host cells, to evade the immune system, and to cause disease. In summary, it is perfectly possible for two viruses to recombine and produce a new strain. But back to the main issue, is Delta Cron real? And more importantly, 
is it a threat? The simple honest answer to this as of the 12th of January 2021 is that we are not completely sure. Scientists are still debating whether or not this is a genuinely new variant or secondary to lab contamination. Although the majority of scientists currently think it's due to lab contamination because the genetic sequence doesn't seem to resemble what should biologically happen when the genes swap around during genetic recombination. There is precedent of viral recombination happening during COVID and most certainly with other viruses like influenza and herpes virus. But the recombined COVID cases seem to be few and far between and none seem to have taken off. After all, we haven't heard in the news of the original strain combining with alpha or indeed alpha combining with delta. Nevertheless, the World Health Organization is keeping track of all new variants that pop up, whether they're simply variants under monitoring like IHU or variants of concern like Omicron and Delta. For the moment, the UK Health Security Agency reports they don't have any new variants under their surveillance at this time. For now, I don't think we need to panic. In fact, I don't think we should be panicking at all. I think we need more evidence to justifiably say that Deltacron is undeniably a genuinely new COVID variant. The disclaimer is that I'm not a virologist. I am a doctor who has witnessed and treated COVID patients in hospital, and I have experience critically analyzing scientific evidence as part of my medical degree. Please take my opinion with a pinch of salt and do your own research to come to your own conclusions. New strains are always going to crop up and they may be due to random genetic variation due to replication of a single strain or it may be due to viral recombination of two different strains. Until that happens, we can't predict the characteristics of each new variant in terms of their ability to spread and cause disease. Because of the random and unpredictable nature of genetic recombination like independent assortment, we need to remain alert, vigilant and sensible. We have to learn to live with the virus while adopting necessary precautions. The reality is that COVID is still a potentially severe and even fatal disease that can have long-lasting consequences, whereas for some it's little more than a bad cold. Although thankfully Omicron does appear to be less severe in its effects compared to Delta. The vast majority of people will benefit from taking a COVID vaccine because the COVID vaccine does reduce your risk of catching COVID and spreading it to others. Even if a fully vaccinated person catches COVID, it's more likely to be an asymptomatic infection or a bad cold, so it does protect you against severe disease and hospitalization. On the other hand, the majority of people in hospital due to severe COVID are much more likely to be unvaccinated. So I think it's most sensible to get a vaccination if you're eligible because the benefits outweigh the risks and you're not just protecting yourself, you're protecting those around you. But in the end, it should be your choice. And I strongly believe that measures such as wearing masks, social distancing, washing hands, avoiding crowds, do tip the balance in favor of humans against the virus. Whether it's the current strains or any new strains yet to come. The bottom line is, if we reduce the spread of the virus through vaccination and these measures, we are giving the virus fewer chances to develop and mutate into potentially dangerous new variants. I'll put some reputable sources in the description so you can do your own research. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this useful and you might find some of my videos on screen interesting too. Until next time, stay safe and stay groovy.